Okay, in comes the Mazda CX-30. I know some of you guys are confused right now because they have the Mazda CX-3, the CX-5, CX-8, and CX-9. So considering the size, they could have called this the Mazda CX-4, but they can't because technically they have already a CX-4 sold in China and China only, not the rest of the world. So they decided to call this oddball the Mazda CX-30. Still confused? Well, just think of this as the jacked up version of the latest Mazda 3 hatchback and you're pretty much spot on. Or otherwise, you know, this is basically what um, the Subaru XV is to the Subaru Impreza. The Mazda CX-30 is a crossover, not a full-blown SUV. Still confused. In terms of looks, well, you can tell that it looks almost identical to the Mazda 3. So you've got the slim LED headlights with this huge piece of chrome that goes from edge to edge. And in the middle here, you get this really nice, big, fantastic grille uh, that is finished in gloss black. So a little bit difficult to clean. And further down, you've got the LED daytime running lights. So interestingly, the LED DRLs are not in the headlights, but move further down. But what you get here is just LED positioning lights. And it looks kind of nice, but you just got to turn it on. And then now I squat. And if you look further down the lower bumper, you're going to find two specific cutouts. That's basically the air curtain, which uh, is for aerodynamic effect, and it's going to guide air towards the wheels. Around the side, you're going to find much more plastic cladding, but this being the 2 liter high variant, you're going to get 18 inch wheels and the top spec one also gets 18 inch wheels. This is not entirely silver, it's got a little bit of a dark chrome tint to it, so uh, that's kind of nice. And moving over to the side mirrors, again, it's door mounted much like the Mazda 3 hatch. After many years of hardship, Mazda has finally decided to give us proper keyless entry. So thank you, Mazda. Um, like I said earlier, more plastic claddings. And if you get towards the back here, you're gonna notice this very familiar Mazda design. And notice this glass house is slightly bigger than the Mazda 3 hatch. I think that is a good move on uh, Mazda's part. And this chrome trim is only found on the lower side of the window surrounds. So, nice. Just when you think the plastic atrocity has come to an abrupt end, well, the joke is on you because the entire lower bumper is not painted and make of that what you will. I just, nah, not for me. But if you look past that, this section of the car is appropriately sporty. You start with this black rear spoiler with the integrated third brake light. Of course, you've got this slim LED taillights which look really nice at night. And uh, it's got this hooded portion at the uh, top which gives it a more three-dimensional look. I kind of like that. And this curvaceous tapered midsection, kind of nice too. It reminds me of the Mazda 3 hatch. Other than that, uh, you've got dual exhaust tailpipes. And if you pop the power tailgate, it's powered. You don't get that with the Mazda 3. And it reveals 430 litres of boot space. So that's pretty cavernous. And if you look underneath this boot floor, there is a space saver wheel. So, not bad. You guys want to take an insert? In terms of engines, there are two options available, starting with the 2-litre naturally aspirated 4-cylinder Sky Active G engine. So this is identical to what you find in the Mazda 3 2-litre engine, so 162 PS and 213 newton meters of torque. All that power is sent to the front wheels through a 6-speed automatic transmission. No all-wheel drive here, just front-wheel drive. Range topping model here is powered by a 1.8-litre low tune turbocharged diesel engine so it makes around 116 ps and 270 newton meters of torque and mechanically just to be clear this guy again the suspension is the same as the mazda 3 so you've got mcpherson struts up front and the torsion beam set up at the back Upon entering the car, I find that it's slightly easier, you know, the process of entering and exiting the car because the car is slightly taller than the Mazda 3. So for those of you who find that the Mazda 3 is a little bit too low for your liking, I think this hits a sweet spot. And once you step inside, the cabin is pretty much identical to the Mazda 3 hatchback and sedan. I think personally, this cabin is a delightful place to be in because you've got swaths of high quality materials used throughout the cabin. And unique to the Mazda CX-30 is this top dash that is, um, well, I think it's got a little 
rubbery texture to it but this soft touch plastic is in brown color and the brown sort of leather is also used down here on the center armrest as well as some of the accents as well as the door cards i think this is a nice touch it adds a little bit of a character to the mazda cx30 and as for the rest of the stuff you get this nice three spoke steering wheel very sporty very high quality buttons the instrument panel is the same as this Mazda 3 and this 8.8 .8 inch head unit with the latest UI is also a very nice thing to use. Overall, I can't fault it except for maybe this air vent design that sticks out like a sore thumb in what would otherwise be the perfect dash layout. Elsewhere, you've got dual zone climate control, uh, a USB port here for your smartphone functions as well as this center console which on the surface of it looks like a piano black finish but if you take a closer look or if you shine like a light on top of it, you can see nice pattern. So I think that is also a nice touch. Aside from that, it's pretty much standard Mazda 3 stuff. So you've got this slidable, adjustable center console with a usable size bin and a USB port as well as a 12 volt socket. Beyond that, up here you've got powered sunroof, manually closable as well. And as for the seats, I have to say that it's actually pretty comfortable. The middle portion is soft and it's going to give you that comfort for everyday driving. But the side bolsters, which hold your uh, legs in place, they are quite firm. So it's almost like being in a race bucket seat or a semi-sports seat. So in that regard, I think Mazda has gotten seat comfort pretty spot on. The lumbar is nice, the shoulder support is good. I've got nothing to fault here. Brilliant job, Mazda. Unfortunately, only the driver gets a 10-way power adjustable system whereas the front passenger seat, even in this 2-litre high model, is fully manual. And to make things worse, there is no 12-speaker Bose sound system to be found in this car, so that is also a slight letdown. As for the back seats, I find the seats to be actually quite comfortable with just enough leg room. So in this regard, I think the Subaru XV is going to be a little bit more spacious. But this is my driving position. I am about 172 centimeters tall, uh, just about enough headroom despite the sloping roof line. And I'm glad that, you know, unlike the Mazda 3 hatchback, I got a properly sized window, although the uh, window line is a little bit high up here but other than that really nice place to be in you've got dual air vents here no uh, third ac temperature control there's also no vent here in the b pillars but otherwise really nice cabin this center armrest has two cubby holders and uh, i think beyond that there's really nothing much to add yeah in terms of safety, this guy is pretty much identical to the Mazda 3 hatchback and all three variants get these items as standard. There are seven airbags including driver's knee airbag, ABS with EBD, traction control, hill start assist, emergency stop signal and a whole bunch more including Isofix child seat anchoring points. But more importantly guys, the top two models add on advanced safety assist and it brings with it a number of safety features that I think you guys are going to find interesting and because you know, basically you guys asked for it and there's quite a bit to go. So it starts with adaptive LED lighting, you've got high beam control, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, driver attention alert as well as autonomous emergency braking with radar cruise control. That's uh, MRCC and you can tell just by looking at this plastic covered front badge. So finally, last but not least guys, the Mazda CX-30 is currently fully imported from Japan and you've got three variants to choose from starting with the base 2 litre model going at 143,000 ringgit all the way to the top spec 1.8 litre diesel model at 173,000 ringgit. But personally, I think this 2 litre high model at 164,000 ringgit is going to be the best selling Mazda CX-30 version in Malaysia. Well, you've got 8 colours to choose from, including this beautiful soul red crystal. All Mazda CX-30s come with the same 5 year or 100,000 kilometres manufacturer backed warranty and it also comes with 5 years free maintenance. What do you guys think of the Mazda CX-30? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and let us know also what you guys think about the pricing because uh, that is an interesting topic considering that it's only a little bit more expensive than the Mazda 3 hatchback. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next year. Happy holidays guys. Bye-bye.